Hello ladies and gentlemen, so uh, today is gonna be a continuation of the previous long video where I've um, discussed and showed you and demoed you the uh, the mono repository sort of mono repository setup where I've used Playwright and WebDriver IO at the same time in the same repo. But this is gonna be a continuation because in this part uh, specifically I'm gonna show you how we can run tests automated tests with the with the usage of uh, webdriver io against an android emulator basically like against uh, the test uh, the test some test application which is located like within the android emulator which in its own terms is uh, like is running in the uh, appium on the on the like appium server as you can see on this little schema right here we're going to be also using the appium inspector but you know this is just uh it's going to be like super quick i think uh, because uh, it's uh, pretty hard to find a working apk um, demo app even though like i've managed to find well actually you know the appium test helper which is basically which basically consists of a single screen uh, but that's gonna be enough to show you like the method on how you can connect to the emulator and like basically run your app locally and uh, grab the elements selectors. Spoiler alert, finding mobile selectors looks much easier to me, at least for now. Well, you know, given it's a test app and it consists only of a single screen, then yeah, uh, you know, if, uh, if I were to use some, something like, uh, you know, some trading platform, where you, you have the 2FA, where you have, you know, the, uh, the SMS confirmation codes, where you have the email con confirmation codes, or, you know, some biometrics. That's gonna, I, I'm sure, like, that, that would be a complete different story. But I'm sure, like, also, I'm, I'm also sure that the, the teams which are responsible for the development of such, uh, such applications, they have you know their own methods of uh you know by bypassing lots of lots of complicated shit on on the lower ends okay i guess we can kind of jump into it right so um where do we start so first things first i've updated the package json um commands a little bit since uh, the last time i've demoed this piece to you and basically what i've done i've just added the emulator name um as a, as an argument in our package JSON, so we can now pass the uh, you know the actual emulator name because you know I'm sure you're gonna have something different right here. <laughs> Basically, that's it for this piece. Then I've also done a little update on the Android uh, WebDriver IO configuration, and uh, basically what I've updated is this thing. I've added at first I've added the emulator name, which is taken from this argument and then passed to the config to to the actual like capability value the device name there's like a default value and uh if something is passed then this value is used then i mean the dynamic value is used what's also worth mentioning right here is that we got our appium app capability added to the config which is basically the uh the path to the apk file named like this in your case it may be like whatever right how do i see this in uh let's say in in the process like working with uh, let's say with devs um when you have regular updates like regularly up updated apk well this path can be like set dyna dynamically so this is not this is not like the most complicated part here but the most complicated part here is where you retrieve the apk file so it actually depends but you know, one of those could be like have some access to the server or have some access uh, to one of the repos where devs actually build these things, fetch the resources folder or something like that. Because I've seen that usually the APKs are stored like within the resources folder folders and um, refresh that kind of, you know, keep the latest checked or tested latest version which has been tested uh, you know to keep track of it regularly fetch specific directory where um, new apk files like or the apk files with an updated versions are about to appear and if they do and if the version version is like higher than the one that is currently stored then you kind of gotta download that should i say like check out check that out right speaking in git terms in your repo and you know place or basically like copy the apk file to your desired path 
or it may be whatever but that's like one thing another thing is probably if uh, if the devs would be so kind to host those uh let's say versions in or like on some service like cloud hosting i mean something like uh, amazon s3 or i don't know probably like dropbox even so you know that would also work but that's how i see it maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm you know Come on, smart asses, it's your turn now <laughs> to correct me, right? So, um, uh, anyways, I mean, like, we, what we have to do is we got to figure out the way how do we, we retrieve the latest version and how do we not miss it, right? So, and, you know, the best way is to do this automatically. So, like, figure out the algorithm on how we can do that stuff. Okay, and yeah, basically everything else in this country remains the same. Now, this is also an interesting part uh, because this is uh, the page object file for our, I named it like an Android main page just because there is like a single screen in this app and basically like every page corresponds to, to, to the single screen. I think this is a good way of uh, like page object description in terms of mobile, I mean like Android and, uh, Android and uh, iOS. But since we're speaking Android, we're speaking Android. As you can see right here, we got we got our uh, like test mode switch element, which is basically a toggler or, or a toggle. And here I got the selector. So how do you get these selectors, right? So as I have mentioned at the start of this demo, we're gonna be using a tool named Appium Inspector, right? And uh, before we get to that, at first we're gonna run. So like as this demo shows, right? As this visualization shows, at first we gotta start the um sort of you know the appium server the environment i guess right which is where we gonna start the emul emulator and uh we we are gonna connect to that emulator via our uh, appium inspector so let's start appium at first so we got uh, the appium start npm command for that if you're interested in more like details on how this runs you may either check this appium.ts or you may check my long, long video on the whole setup of this monorepo-like structure. But okay, let's start Appium. Uh, it is running, as you can see right here, it started. Now we gotta start our emulator. This is gonna take a little bit longer. Hopefully we're gonna hear this sound, like that Android sound. I guess you're, you'll hear it when it starts. So let's just wait for a little bit course okay seems nice i think you you should have heard that probably by now so this looks like it's running at least i don't see any server errors or something like that so uh let's get back to our appium inspector window i'm gonna enlarge that so like what this does is basically creates a remote connection or like a connection to, to the remote host which in our case is appium server and uh, it uh, also accepts like capabilities in the same fashion as we pass them in our web driver IO configuration. So basically like the only thing, like the only difference is that this is manual connection. And this is like, the, 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 this is a setup for the automated connection. We are sort of playing the role of the web driver IO right now. Right, so I got like the saved capability presets right here. So like specifically for the test app and the emulator, which I've created locally. And uh, yeah, let me just click on that. So as you can see right here, this basically goes in the form of JSON and like same capabilities apply, right? The only difference is that the Appium app uh, capability receives the full or like the absolute path to the APK file rather than, you know, uh, rather than something that we have here, like which uh, starts somewhere around like the uh the framework core uh directory whereas here uh the inspector basically accepts the full or the absolute path which starts from the very 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 let's see top right okay so let's now start like click on start session and wait until it connects so as you can see we got some action going on on the appm server okay it looks good right to your left you can see the uh, app screen and uh, like the the default screen which opens when you open the app so given you may have an you may have another app and the screen is probably gonna be dif different so in that case that i'm about to show you i'm actually selecting this toggler and when i click on the element 
you can see like two sections on this screen being opened in this window i mean the first one is uh, app source this is something that we can uh, open in the web browser for instance so when we kind of you know from the context menu we click on the view page source this is going to give us like the, the uh, raw uh, source code of the specific page whereas this uh, is a representation of uh, the source code of the specific screen on the, in the mobile the element is like already selected and what i like about <laughs> actually like at least for now what i like about the mobile is that you know it's pretty straightforward right so like each element or like almost like almost each element has its own id or the specific text so there's no iframes there's no shadow doms you know there's no for now at least there's no captchas and whatever the fuck you know <laughs> so you're not like you're not having your brain uh, destroyed and you know thrown into trash like almost instantly so so basically like yeah this is the app source and this is the the uh selected elements section so you cannot like directly navigate like like you would typically navigate in, in the mobile but you when you select the element you can trigger some actions against that element right so you can either tap on it like that and you can see the state is gonna change or you can you know if it would be some input or like a text area or whatever you could be able to just you know send keys like send some screen or text you know or clear it you know copy the attributes you know download the screenshot what's interesting for us here is that you know we are at first we're gonna need you know the uh, element selectors or the selector like since we're gonna be checking that uh, at first this toggler is off then we're gonna tap on it and then we're gonna check that it's like clicked or that it shows you know basically that the state of this element has changed so basically we're gonna do, do the tap thing and i guess uh here you have the checked false state so i believe either yeah you gotta like re-click on the on the element in order to see this uh you know the 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 attributes uh, updated and yeah as you can see now the checked basically checked attribute is it has the uh, true value right now so that's like the simplest test which requires you know quite a lot of setup but that's i guess this is the mobile specifics of this thing so what do we have right now we've taken this id and we have added it or like passed it as a string in our get method which is going to return us uh, this selector and then we got the method uh, where we wait for this uh, element at first we wait for it to be displayed and we got some specific uh, you know custom timeout message for that um then we got a constant which is named is check before basically what i've just said we're checking that it, 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 it was not checked before and we are getting the attribute named checked and asserting it against the true value strict assertion which is this one at first it's gonna be it, it's gonna be false of course and if it is true then we're throwing a new error right this is the error text but it's gonna be false obviously so this is not gonna this condition is not gonna be met then we got this test mode switch uh, once again we then tap on the element basically by using the click method and um the last thing we do is we wait until the checked attribute obtains the uh, true value something like that and we got the uh timeout message once again i guess that's about 30 seconds in the timeouts because this is the way that wait for timeout this is the one that we are uh using or that is being used by default you know in all the uh web driver methods okay and yeah of course i've imported this page into the page manager and here it is in the uh in our spec the spec is like i've also designed it to fail explicitly you know just to show you the artifacts in the report at least locally for now well obviously the next thing is gonna be do this do the same in the like as a part of some github action or workflow so yeah let us uh, run the tests and uh hopefully it's gonna run the way we expect it to some action is going on in the appium and against the app okay looks like it failed as we expected it to we expected the true to be false right so this is the failure so it failed on the place or the step or at the part where we expected it to fail okay so let's open the alert reporter which should have been automatically generated as the part of uh, this uh, framework configuration so this is the npm command to do that here is our report 
here is our sweets uh, like results here's our failure and here's our artifacts so let's take a look at the execution video at first yeah basically as you can see the element state changes right so let me zoom out a little bit come on okay yeah take a look at this toggler it happens very quickly so basically this is the recording from the mobile browser window okay and then we got our screenshots this is the method for you to use on a project at least if you want to automate something locally using the uh you know the An android mobile emulator apm server apm inspector as uh as the tool to examine the dom and you know the element actions you can like record the sessions also so like it's all cool out here so i'm gonna quit this session and also how you can run these tests like locally so um the next part is probably gonna be i'll um, i'm gonna like probably like you know busting my ass to figure out how, how to run this stuff via github actions because you gotta somehow you know you you, somehow, you got some to generate you gotta generate that you know you, you gotta create that android emulator somehow in the ci and install like all the compo components like uh, like you do locally which uh, may probably it's gonna require some additional steps as it always does because i'm using the mac and you know the test runner but like it uses the ubuntu linux i guess yeah there's a different os but hopefully we can reach that goal right so once again thank you for your attention feel free to use that uh on your projects if you figure out how to run this stuff in ci not github but you know just any other like any ci at all i would be very and very grateful if you would share this information just as i'm sharing this with you right now because you know mobile automation is you know pretty specific and uh, frankly speaking i don't know a single person that would be doing that like live like throughout my 10 year career in IT, I, I interacted with one, two, like somewhere around three, I guess, <laughs> people who were somewhere involved in these setups and, you know, writing some mobile automation tests. No one like ever showed me how to, how to do that step by step. So, you know, I have to figure out by myself. Personally, I consider this to be a valuable skill. So um, hopefully this video was a help. And yeah, once again, use it, don't abuse it. So see you in the next one. Bye-bye.